Hi, hi everyone. Um, no, I, I hope everyone can see me now. Good, great. Um, yes, thank you for having me today. Thank you for everyone who's here. I can see we are, we are at 190 participants. That's a good, great, great. Juliet, thank you for the help. I highly appreciate it. Thank you for the introduction. That was some good energy. Love it. Um, just a slight introduction about me. This is Mark, Mark Mushiri. Um, now, what can I say? Yes, Mark Mushiri. I was I, I was part of Centronomy Campus Edition in the year uh, in the in, I think it was 28, 2019. Yes, and then um uh Centronomy went on, became an ambassador for Centronomy for about two years, 2019, 2020. It was a great experience, one that I can I can always talk about because it builds so much networks for me, it builds so much career growth in me. And that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how you can maximize networking, how you can maximize your, your potential and build and build and build some of the things you need to have your career grow. So um, uh, again, my name is Mark. Um, passionate about mentorship and passionate about anything traveling and making merry. So yeah, I think uh, Juliet. Uh, we can uh, continue. Uh, okay, good, 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 great. Uh, so I want to share my screen for a moment. Uh, just uh, let me share. Let me share my screen. Just a minute. Yes, I hope you can see my screen now. Ah, good, great. Just a minute. Yes, so this is today's topic. Today's topic is how you can communicate your value to your first employer. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Mark Mushiri. Uh, currently, I'm a People and Culture Associate in Strathmore University. Basically, that is in the new HR. It's my the new HR term to nowadays is the People and Culture. So yeah, in the first in the first screen, you can see it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's a, it's two people holding uh jigsaw pieces, and that is what we want to talk about today. We want to help you connect those two jigsaws to make. To, for me, to make something which is very, um, uh, which makes sense to the employer. So how, how you can communicate your value uh, again to your first employer. Just uh, give me a minute. Um, yeah, perfect, we're back. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, <laughs> So today we're going to talk about these three big steps. First of all, we're going to talk about how to build your career value, uh, how to make yourself known, how to build a brand of yourself, how to make your brand known by the employers as well. Um, then we're going to talk about the job search. Are you looking in all the right places? Uh, how, how, how better can you look in these places? How better can you reach out to employers, recruiters, to companies and organizations? And then going to the next step, we're going to talk about how to effectively communicate your value during employment. This is how, how do you make yourself known? How do you communicate in interviews? How do you, um, you know, get that job through those interviews? Yeah. Um, then the third, the third one will be how to secure the job. Now, for example, you got the job. How do you stay in the job? How do you grow in that job? So yeah, today, welcome to this session. I hope, I know there's going to be a lot of learning. Have your notebooks ready. Have your questions ready. Um, yeah, and be ready to learn. Um, so we're going to go, go to the next slide. Uh, so the first one is how do you build your career value? So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how you understand yourself, how do you, understanding yourself, understanding who you are, understanding your personality and who you are, what things you can do, how you can do them, how, what you can improve on. And you know, there is, there's this saying of there are things you can work on and there are things you have to accept about yourself. So there's the self, self, uh, self-awareness self part and there's also the self-acceptance part. So how do you get to know about yourself? How do you understand who you are? And then how do you grow? How do you build into now accepting who you are and things you can change and things you can work on and then things you can't work on? Yeah. So again, and then uh, knowing yourself 
gives you a sense of direction. It gives you a focus. It makes you know what exactly you can accept, what exactly you want in life. So it really gives you a value by, by knowing itself, by you knowing yourself already gives you value. Yeah, so that is the first thing about building your value, knowing, understanding yourself, understanding all the good things, understanding and knowing your madness, you know, just understanding who you are, your personality. Um, yeah, yeah. Then the second, the second thing I can talk about is uh, how you need to build a working experience. You need to build a working experience. How? So you're in campus and uh, you want to build a working experience. And you've had every single time recruiters want people with work experience. So how do you maximize on building your work experience? So what I'd say is apply for jobs, any kind of jobs, you know, do those jobs, sales and marketing. You know, some of these jobs will require you to just push yourself, ujitume, yeah? put yourself out there, market yourself and get that job. Marketing, brand representations. If you're a model, go do modeling. If it's acting, if you can act, go act. Yeah. Uh, one thing about, one thing that Centronomy did for me, I was a brand representative for Centronomy. I was a campus edition ambassador. And one thing it did for me was it helped me grow my experience. So but what I can say is by building, by doing these small, small jobs, you understand dynamics of work. You even end up appreciating why people do what they do. Work doesn't just move by itself. People move the work. So for as much as, yes, you're doing for the experience, you're also doing for your own experience. You're also doing so that you can understand how things work at the workplace. So Centronomy gave me this opportunity and one thing I can tell you is I came to appreciate the work that marketers do because marketing is not an easy task. Some of the things we were being told to do, it seemed easy. You know, um, yeah, I'm going to bring 20 clients in. Yeah, you give your own goals, you give everything out there. But in reality, it's tough to convince somebody to pay for something. And it takes practice. It takes experience. It, it, it takes you to be very aggressive for you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I can talk about building a work experience is volunteering in projects on community service. Yeah. Um, CSR for different organizations. Like, for example, uh, some of the CSRs I know about, some of the projects that usually are brought up by organizations are like, um, there's one called... Um, uh, there, there are some which are usually brought up by companies. One of them, one of them is usually, for example, uh, I'm trying to remember, yes, Unilever, for example. Um, Unilever has this CSR called Heroes for Change. And Heroes for Change is one of those uh, opportunities that, you know, they help you grow into the company. You work for them, you volunteer for them, and easily grow into the company. You get reabsorbed easily. So yeah, so, that, so some of these things you need to do are uh, volunteering projects on community service, CSR for different organizations, you know, et cetera. Um, then also participate in those activities. You're in campus today and you still do. So we are talking about building your, building your value while still outside the workplace. So I participate in these activities. Go to clubs, societies like uh, ISEC, Model UN, Presidential. I was a member of ISEC, and one thing also that helped me really grow. Some of these things, some of these things that uh, give you leadership, leadership positions, uh, make you understand what the value of soft skills. Because soft skills are talking to people. How do you talk to people? Uh, etiquette. Um, presentation skills, dressing. So some of these things are what some of these clubs bring out and they help you understand it at an earlier, at an earlier stage in life. So being, being part of ISEC as well was a very good experience for me and it helped me gain and build my value as a person. Um, also participating in leadership activities. Leadership could be in those clubs, leadership could be in any other groups you can be involved in. Um, let's talk about your network. Your network is your network. Um, so one thing I can talk about building your worth is by 
building solid networks, attending uh, professional forums, um, using leveraging LinkedIn. Um, I remember uh, a, a, a high story of me being in Centronomy. Uh, being Centronomy opened up so many networks for me that my first job was through Centronomy. That was a great thing for me. I worked in a company called Safe Border through Centronomy. Centronomy had partnerships with some of these companies. So they used to give priorities to people who are, uh, who are in the networks. So me having been in that network of Centronomy, it gave me an opportunity to uh, have that networking event, you know, uh, speaking out, speaking up. You know, you can just speak up to somebody yet they don't know you. So Centronomy made me known. And this is some of the things we're talking about, your network. Who are you relating to? Who are you talking to every single time? Also Centronomy, it also brought up the issue of mentorship. Networks, net, mentorship and networking is kind of uh, the same because you only get mentors with good networks. So one of the mentors, some of the mentors we had really improved on our value. I remember one of the biggest mentors who we used to relate with was, was Monesi. And Monesi Musalia used to communicate. That guy used to talk to you and you used to get it. You used to want to do what he just said, you know, just learn from him. And every single time you um, basically get a challenge from them. And that's something only good networks can do for you. Yeah. So this is thing about uh let's take 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 travel back in time uh the times when there was no phones no computers no nothing and those times that is when in the evening people sit in around a bonfire at the, at the at the fireplace so the question is what fireplace are you seated in who is around your fireplace is the essence of the fireplace was to have stories go around so what stories are you listening to in that fireplace so, you know, listen to the kind of friends you hang out with, the kind of networks you have, what stories are being talked about. You know, you could be in the, you could be in the fireplace with people who, people like Bill Gates, people like Steve Jobs. What stories do they give? Are these stories that build you? Are these stories that build your mind, blow your mind every single time? Or they, are these stories where every single time it's just, you know, they just drain you? So again, your network is your network. Yeah. Next one, we'll talk about continuous learning. Um, you know, get enrolled in other, other small courses online, learn a language, self-development courses. Um, you, you know, uh, these, these ones build on you. They also help you uh, interact with other people, understand people's perspectives. Uh, having languages, it gives you more opportunities. It, that is value by itself. You know, I can speak English and Kiswahili as compared to somebody who can speak English, Kiswahili and Chinese. I mean, they have more value when they have that extra notch, you know. Yeah, work on your soft skills, learn a language, be very articulate. You know, those are the soft skills, being articulate, proper dressing, uh, presentation skills, learn how to use uh, different presentation um uh, softwares on your computers, etiquette, emails. Something interesting about emails, how does your email sound? Is it this, those emails which you used to use for Facebook names? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. So have, an, have a good email so that it can already communicate who you are by the view of it, yeah? Then the lastly, I can talk about mentorship. Mentorship is, as I said before, it's a close thing to my heart because... Mentorship is what helps people grow because walking alone, you're like walking in darkness, yeah? But when you have somebody holding your hand, when you have somebody showing you the way, they have been where you are and they're making your path just better. You can imagine somebody who is training to be a swimmer and they're being trained by the biggest Michael Phelps, you know, the biggest, the best swimmers of the world. That's a mentor as compared to somebody who wakes up to go and train themselves. So having a mentor gives you a notch higher. It makes you understand the tricks of the, the tricks, the, 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 the way to move, how to move, how to get where you are, yeah? So Bob Proctor once said, a mentor is somebody who sees more talent and ability within you 
than you, you than you see in yourself and helps bring out and helps bring it out of you so yeah they can see something they have been where you are and they can show you how to use the something they have seen in you yeah so get a mentor not just get a mentor but through the attending of those networking events through you know um going for those extra uh, club activities you're going to spot people who are very authentic and those authentic people can be the best of mentors especially in your field of study especially in your field of work and, and then also in your field of career where you want to go where you want to be so yeah um going to the next slide um we're going to talk about ways of getting that interview how do you get into that interview how do you get shortlisted yeah um, I started by saying um, uh, people in culture associate in Strathmore, and these are some of the things we do. We shortlist people. We look at CVs, we put them out, put them aside, some we put them in. So one of the best ways you can have, you can ask that, you can get that interview is having a comprehensive CV. Yeah, because the CV is the only document linking you and the recruiter. Like that's the only thing that as at the shortlisting stage, that's the only thing linking me and that candidate. So the only way you can commit, the only way you can ace that interview is by first of all, having a good CV. Later on, through the sessions, you're going to learn a good CV, how a good CV should look like. Um, yeah, so the next one is using your networks. Um, where possible, again, where possible, use the connections you have to go to the places. But again, don't over rely to connections. You know, connections, you know, that uncle who always tells you, hey, Fanya, he costs. I, I, you know, you know, that uncle who uh, at times you may be disappointed by over relying on these connections. Yeah. Then um, something else you can do with your networks. You know, again, I talked about maximizing LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a very professional social media. It's where employers talk about things, recruiters are recruiting people. Well, be bold, DM that recruiter, you know, shoot your shots, talk to them. I mean, how bad, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? Getting a, a regret, well, you tried, but you can also, you can as well get that job through shooting your shot. I have friends who actually working in the biggest, some of the biggest organizations and they got it by being bold, being bold and just communicating their value through their network, LinkedIn. You know, that's something else you can do. And the next thing is applying for jobs. You can't sit there and wait for a job you've never applied for. So apply for those jobs, apply for internship jobs, graduate assistant jobs, apply for those attachments. At times, even apply for a role that you're not qualified for. You, you just never know. Because some of the things we do as recruiters, we usually keep we usually keep a record of, we usually have databases where we can save CVs of people who would qualify for another job. So you find, yes, you applied for this role, but you can fit in another role. Your CV communicates your value real well. So we get your CV and put it in another, uh, in another database for a future job. So yeah, apply for that job. Like don't, you can't get a job you haven't applied for. That's simply it. So apply for those jobs. Um, talk about bonus points. Um, participate in challenges set up by different organizations. Like for example, some of the challenges, some of the good things I participated in, um, shout out to some of my friends. I remember doing this with Eugene. Uh, it was the Brandstorm L'Oreal Brandstorm challenge, challenge. So L'Oreal has this challenge whereby you given you given a challenge and you're told to, you know, solve um, solve the project, make a presentation, do something that is going to solve this problem. So participating in these challenges like L'Oreal, BAT also have another one called Battle of the Minds. Unilever also I talked about Heroes for Change. Um, so some of these things you have to be they give you an edge. Because it's a lot of work. It takes research. It takes good presentation skills. It takes talking to a panel and convincing them about the product you think of coming up with. Yeah. So these are the things we really did when back in campus. And it has given us edge, adding up the value, what value you have. So um, uh, you can, one thing, two things that can, two things can happen. You can grow into the company. How, having done those challenges, you can have an opportunity to work for the company. Like for example, you've done all these, these for L'Oreal, L'Oreal can absorb you. 
also having it in your CV that you have done this, this was the presentation you had, this is how it went. It can also build in your CV, yeah? So going to the next, um, how do you prepare? So you've been, you've been shortlisted, you've been called for an interview. So what do you do? So one thing I can talk about is research on the company you're interviewing for, get the nitty gritty, understand the company. Nowadays, there's no panelist who's going to ask you, tell us about the vision of our company. No, 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 no. What happens is we pick, we pick your understanding from how you answer the questions. How you answer the question will direct somebody whether you, you know what the company values are, yeah? So prepare for technical questions revolving around your role in, in, the, in the industry, yeah? For example, in finance, that there, there those technical things that you know don't miss out so prepare for them make sure you're up to date with the trends yeah then use linkedin um if possible every single time you're called for an interview you're given a call somebody tells you come for this interview pick their name um just search it in linkedin those might be part of your panelists and something interesting about that is that having making seeing a face knowing who you who's about to interview you it builds confidence. It, it makes you understand what you're going, what you signed up for, what you're going for, yeah? So lastly, practice your answer, dress up, get there on time, and you be ready for the interview, yes? Yeah? yeah. So uh, back, back again, I was going to talk about confidence. I'm going to talk about the next slide. Uh, so during the interview now, now you've been, you're in the interview. So something I'll talk about is EQ over IQ. So you see, the thing is, the, the reason why you've got this far to this interview stage is because we have seen, you've gone through your CV and you can see that this person has qualified for this job. The experiences that they have put down on their CVs seem they can get to this job. So EQ now is when now, when you're in the interview is now you marketing yourself, you presenting yourself onto the panel. So EQ is about reading the room. It's how you answer the questions. It's how you appeal to the panelists. It's your tonal variations, it's your nonverbal cues. So EQ is, it's, it's so much interesting. Uh, onto the next point, it's, it helps you change from having an interrogation to having a conversation. So how can you change the best way of having, of having a, a good interview is by changing the interrogation to being a conversation. And how do you do that? You do that by being emotionally intelligent, by explaining, explaining yourself, expressing your value, expressing yourself. When you're asked, do you, um, let's say, do you work late hours? For example, don't say yes, don't say no, don't give one word answers. Instead, just expound on your answer. Talk, talk more, give yourself value, talk about yourself. That's something else about, about your brand. What do you do? How do you market yourself to the, to the panelists, yeah? Then the next one will be be yourself. I was going to talk about it. Be yourself, talk about things you love, make the panelist understand what makes you, you. Nowadays in people and culture, it's not just about having an employee, no. It's about having an all-round employee, we want to understand the value you bring, even aside from work, what do you do extra? Do we have a person who can, let's say, bake, you know? Do we have somebody who can public, do public speaking? Like, do, so talk about the things you love, make your panelists understand what makes you, you, and be clear about it. That is speaking about your brand, because you yourself, you are a brand, yeah? And confidence is the last one. So be bold and confident when answering the questions. Build your, con your confidence by preparing enough. So um, interestingly, the word confidence, uh, did you know the root word of the word confidence comes to the word con? Um, this is something I, I, I just thought of. Uh, you, you, you judge whether it's a fake or fact. You can put in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat whether it's fake or fact. You know, confidence, it's, 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 it's something that you could be so nervous inside you because we all know that interviews, even if you're, you have experience of a thousand years in interviews, you'll still be nervous when in interview. But how are people perceiving you? How do you make people perceive you in the interview? So if the word con is coming from, yes, you're nervous, but people perceive you as very confident. You understand? So be the best con artist in the room. Be confident. 
talk about things in a very articulate manner dress up nice be the best you can yeah then the next one we're going to go so you got the job so what next um so the, some of the things you can do is collaborate work closely with your colleagues understand the organization better and foster teamwork show initiative be bold and share ideas and work them out understand your colleagues and clients feedback from them can make or break your career so feedback from your clients some of the, some, we usually have 360 degrees feedback from that security guard you pass every day how do you treat them how do you make them feel that 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 housekeeper how do you make them feel so it's very important to make your clients your make your client your, your colleagues feel good about themselves and also your clients feedback from clients is very important i'm going to talk about personal branding what do people know you for in, what do you what do people know you for and maybe in the first place do people know you yeah, in the organization do people know you apart from the department you are in do people know you uh, uh, there's a quote down there if you're not seen if you're not heard then you do not exist so you can't grow your career if you're not seen you can't grow your career if you're not heard you could be the one working the hardest but the fact that nobody sees you nobody knows about you nobody knows what you do for fun simple things simple things about these things how do people know you there's a there's something else i've written there personal branding at work are you memorable enough what do people remember you about you when you leave a room so some of these things are what gives you leverage to getting that confirmation to getting that promotion to getting that you know that edge so every single time you 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 out there what is your brand what does your brand speak about do people know what you do every day you know some of these things are what give you that notch that push to being the best in the organization so yeah um thank you that was my short presentation i'm sure we'll be having a good q and a uh yeah let's collaborate uh find me on linkedin mark Maina, and on instagram find me on shiri mark thank you ah that was amazing amazing mark and even before you leave there are a couple of questions that are coming in so yeah. um before you leave uh, um i hope you actually don't leave we'll also have like a wide q a after i saw elsie had had raised up her hand but before we go to elsie's question i'd like to make aware everyone aware of the fact that if you want to ask um ask a question kindly put it on the q a section on zoom just so that um, your, your questions cannot be left out among all the other comments um that are coming in. So I'm seeing Elsie. Elsie, you had raised up your hand. Um, I think we can give you a chance to actually ask yourself, uh, ask your question in person or rather on Zoom in person <laughs> to Mark. Um, Elsie, are you in the room? Um, Elsie? And even before Elsie asks her question, I'm just, there are a couple of things that you said that really stood out to me. Um, I even feel like I, <laughs> I am learning a whole bunch of other things <laughs> just from your presentation and I have, I have the industry itself. So I like that you yeah. told people their shorts you know that's very important um identify who are some of these people on linkedin you know you want to apply for a specific job and there's that specific person who you know is the recruiter i mean shoot your shot as mark has said i also love the fact that you told people to you know to dress up when they're going for an interview because i think a lot of people forget how you look gives an impression or a perception of who you are you might have like uh, the best points you might be selling the best value but how you look in an interview would really really turn off people um uh, so yeah i love that that you spoke about that um i love that you spoke about using eq versus IQ. i was literally writing them down and i love that the whole your whole presentation was based around um you know creating value so always creating value in wherever you go even if you're networking with guys even if you're doing all that good stuff just creating your value is i think it's very important and even as people or you know as people who are inside the room right now 
uh, I think you need to take away the fact that you are a value creating entity. You come with so many things like around you as a person, you come with so, so much. You have so much value. So we have questions in the Q&A section. I think Mark, you can also be responding to a few of those um, just so that we do not we, we do not get pressed of time. Elsie, um, we will we'll let you speak. We we'll let you speak during the Q&A se session. I'm also see seeing Stephen Musia. We will let you speak. Um, once once the other speaker has already spoken so mark please don't leave i know a lot a lot of people have questions for you so yeah, uh yeah. You, can, you can be answering a few of the questions on the q a section and i'm seeing now we even have a bigger quorum to 44 people guys if this is you calling your squad squad mark you see what you're doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> squad, squad over here, which is a good thing um yeah. and you've had from the recruit from a recruiter himself he has told you he is giving you the insights of the trade so yeah mark kindly sp please stick around as you answer some questions on the q and a yeah. section yeah. um yeah and then yeah we'll definitely have a q and a section at the end of the at the end of the session but for now we have another poll just so that we can make sure guys you guys are with us we have another poll um that we can launch um right now so we want to continuously know who are the people in the room and you know so guys fill in the uh, the poll that is there on the screen right now. exactly it has just been launched so please guys fill in the poll i will give you at least Two, two minutes, two to three minutes. I know it's a chap chap young ins over here. So I'll give you at least two, two to three minutes to fill in the poll. So it's um it's currently live right now. So please fill in the poll. Um, seeing which area of study a lot of people are in business. We have some people in engineering. Wow, I love it. I love to see it. I'm seeing engineering. Hey, wow. We have we have we have people who are expected salary. I'm seeing 30 to 60, 0 to 30. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Let's continue filling in the poll, guys. We are 236 people as at right now. I'm seeing you guys are still filling in the poll section. That's amazing. Um, a lot of people believe in yourselves. I like it. For the people who don't believe um, that you can land a job, I hope. I hope that, that right now you have taken away the, 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 the tips that Mark has shared in the room. Um, are you ready for a corporate? Nice. I'm seeing a lot of people are ready for the corporate space. So it's just the tools. It's just the, the practical steps that we are now sharing in this session. And I love, I love to see it. I'm seeing a lot of remarks, a nice presentation. Mark, people are saying your presentation, your presentation was really nice. It was really insightful. I'm happy. I'm happy that you guys are enjoying the session as at right now. And we have we have another speaker. We have another speaker who is now who is continuously going to blow your mind. Um, and even as he prepares, Reynold, I know you're in the room. Even as Reynold prepares um, for his section, guys are still filling in. So tell us, tell us where you are from, guys. As you had, Mark told you he networked when he was doing campus edition. So. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy that uh, Mark brought that out. And guys, just to remind you that again, uh, Mark did the campus edition program and he is one of our speakers today and he has actually seen the fruits of the campus edition program. So I hope that you guys are taking into consideration and I love that we're still filling in the poll. Um, so it is 10.55, I'll wait for a few more people. I'm seeing, I think like 40 people haven't filled the poll. Um, so I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a minute, just an extra minute for you guys to fill the poll. Um, I'm still seeing you guys fill the poll, giving you an extra minute so that you can, um, you can finish up on that and we can go to our next speaker of the day today who is going to be Reynold. I have just been made aware that Yvonne Shasuvila will not be joining us today. She's not feeling well. So um, don't worry, don't worry guys. We will see how we can organize just a little bit of something, some other time with, with Yvonne. But the good thing Yvonne is as is one of the trainers in the Camp Centronomy Campus Edition program. So if you, the minute you join us, you will get to interact with Yvonne on a personal level or rather on Zoom, 
Zoom's personal level. So don't you worry. Um, we just pray that she hope she gets better and that she'll be feeling fine by the time the sessions or the classes start. And I love that we have already finished filling the poll. So we will go right next to our other trainer. And Mark is still in the room. So guys, if you have questions, please put them on the Q&A section so that your questions cannot be left out and that we make sure every single one of you or every single one of your questions has been answered. So to our next speaker, who is Reynold or oh, Reynold, I'm already seeing you in the room, you know, kindly turn on your mic so that people can even prepare to hear from Reynold himself. Reynold is also an ambassador of Campus Edition. Love that you're in the room. Hi, Reynold. Love that you're in the room. Um, he's currently doing amazing, amazing things. Um, at shortlist and i know a lot of us know all about shortlist um reynold is a senior talent consultant at shortlist professionals and he's hey he's reputed reynold your your hey yani your reputation precedes you in all angles and all levels i'm even feeling afraid of being in the room with you but um i just like to uh, you to now go ahead and share and tell us what it is that you're going to tell these young people who i are so eager to hear and learn from you so karibu sana reynold um i'm leaving the floor over to you Fantastic. Thank you so much, Juliet. Um, yeah, so my name is Reynold Ogor, as Juliet has said. I am a senior recruiter at Shortlist. And what I do is that um, I, I work with organizations and help them recruit on the senior um, level executive. So from mid-level managers up until CEOs, CFOs, and people on the C-suite level. I love that Mark talked about like the, the, the importance of joining organizations because even I was part of like several organizations. I was in ISEC, um, joined like ISEC KU, went up until like ISEC Kenya. I was in MUN as well, went up until like the Kenya MUN. I was in Centonomy as well. I was, I was in the campus edition, I think for 2017. So generally, generally, I would say if you are still in campus, like joining one of these, I've seen someone said they're in Inactus, like joining some of these organizations is very important because it helps you build some of the soft skills or competencies that you would be able to leverage at a later date when you're joining now the active job market. So Mark has, has touched on a lot of like important um, things that you need to consider in order to know your value. Um, and I'll try not to belabor the point and I'll try to touch on a few other, uh, other topics that um, he might have not covered just so that we have, uh, we make sure that like when you're leaving this space, you're leaving this space having gained value, yeah? So I'm just gonna share my screen. I hope you can be able to see my screen, yeah? Cool, so the one thing that I would want us to start with is just thinking about like for the next 20 or so minutes that I'm going to be sharing the session. I want, I want this to be very interactive. I want you to gain as much value as you can and I want you to be able to learn as much as you can in this short period of time. So think about that one thing that you expect to gain from the session. So what's that one thing that you think you, you want to gain from this session? Feel free to put it in the chat and I'll just be reading it as I go along just to make sure that as I'm continuing and, and, and as you're continuing in the session, you are gaining value from this um, from, from this session. Yeah. So what's the one thing that you want to gain? Yeah. Just put it in the chat so that we make sure that you're covered as we continue for the session. Yeah. The one thing that I want us to do, um, or I, I love doing whenever we, we are, I'm in sessions or presentations like this, is holding space. So how are you holding space for yourself? How you and and how do you hold space? Who you hold space by making sure that you're present, that you're asking as many questions as possible, you're seeking clarification, and you are actively participating. There's no wrong answers. Like we are all learning, we are all trying to figure this thing called life out. So like, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to jump in because this is why we have this session, yeah? So what's your value? Like what's the, the number one question I think most people here want to know is like, how do I even know my value, yeah? And how can I be able to communicate your value, yeah? So at the very, very basic level, most people struggle yeah i saw someone in the chat ask like how do i even how do i speak about myself like how do i answer the tell me about yourself question yeah and the tell me about your yourself question is usually 
aimed at at finding out whether you know your value and you can be able to communicate your value during an interview yeah so your value is basically what you're bringing to the table what are the skills experiences competencies that you're bringing to the table um and how can you be able to be useful to an employer yeah so how would you how will your, your particular skill set be of use to a particular company in whatever industry and in whatever sector that you're in. And communicating your value can be in various ways. You can communicate your value through your CV, you can communicate your, your value online through LinkedIn or an online portfolio, and you can communicate your value in person. Now that's like now when you're invited for the interviews, yeah? And at the very, very basic level, I'd like us to think about like how do we go about figuring out our value yeah because that's one thing i know if you're starting out um you don't know about the job market you've never done an internship before you might struggle to even know like am i actually worthy like how what's my worth and how can i be able to communicate that yeah let me just check if there's any any comments gain enough confidence to shoot my shots fantastic thank you so much julia i'd like to understand the whole thing about interviews fantastic Great. So when you're thinking about like, okay, what's my worth? How do I like, what am I bringing to the table? You know, that question people usually ask when they're dating, like, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. And, and I usually say when you're, when you're in an interview setting, you're, it's basically like going on a date. Yeah. You're here to learn about like the company and the company is here to learn about you. You're here to learn about like what um where you fit like how would you be a perfect match yeah and for you to be able to know that you have to do like you have to do a self-assessment you have to do I, I i usually say like for you to be able to dig into what you bring to the table you can do that three three main ways of course there'd be there, maybe there's tons of other ways but for me i'd say these three ways are, are the surest bet to be able to start you off yeah number one is assess yourself like bring yourself to a meeting, you know, like sit down with a notebook and try and think like, okay, up until now, what are some of the skills that I have? Yeah. What are, what's the education that I'm, I'm bringing to the table? You know, what are some of the competencies I've learned? Some of you are in ISEC, some of you are in NEN. One of the competencies that you learn there is communication. Yeah. Communication is a huge thing um, in the job market. If you can't be able to communicate, the chances of you landing an opportunity and even scaling up and even like getting promoted will be very, very minimal. Yeah. So what are some of the competencies that you've been able to, to gain through even through just classes, through like your, um, if you volunteer, through like those volunteer programs that you do, you know, like how, um, what have you gained and how can you be able to use that um, in the job market? So write down the skills, competencies, your education level, everything that you can think of, yeah? That's number one. Number two, I would say, Sometimes it's hard to assess yourself, yeah? So involve people in your network. You know, like you can just, there's a friend of mine who loves sending me like surveys every year in, in, a, in, a, in an effort of trying to like improve herself. She usually sends like an anonymized survey and she's like, yeah, just tell me where I'm doing right, where I'm doing wrong, how I can improve. So like, yeah, approach your family and your friends, like just ask them point blank, yeah? What do you think I'm really good at? Like from your observation, what do you think I'm good at? And where do you, where do you think like, I could be able to use that in the job market, particularly like your, your, your older family. So like your mom, your dad, your uncles, like they might notice something about you that you don't even know about yourself, you know? So like having that secondary um, review or assessment by someone who's not yourself will help you even realize some things that you hadn't, you know? There's a friend of mine who once we had a chat and like I was telling her how she's really good at event management. She didn't even realize that she's good at it, you know? And it's, and for some people think like event management has to be this huge thing. No, she'd be really good at organizing like family events. Like she would organize like an out of town camp in Nanyuki or like if people want to have like a birthday, she's the go-to person, you know? And it's something that comes very easy for her. Why? Because she's very, she's highly organized, you know? And she didn't even notice that like, that's something that can be leveraged in the job market, you know? So like thinking through those those small, small things that you're really good at, that you don't even, you can't even like, you, you wouldn't even like assume that would be important in the job market, have like write those things down and try and assess like, where can this skill set be used, yeah? Number three is, of course, online assessment tool. So there's the Belbin test um, and there's several other like online assessment tools that will help you understand what you're good at, 
how you work with people and how you'd be in a team, yeah? And why this is important is because when you're mapping out your career, some of the things you need to leverage are your, your energizers. So what gives you energy? Like what's the one thing you can do and do without even feeling like you're working, yeah? And how can you be able to leverage that to be able to help you understand, yeah, this is a career I see myself in because this is something that comes easy for me. It's, it's, you don't necessarily have to be like the best at it, but it's something that you have a passion for or like you feel very strongly about, you know? And it doesn't have to be anything complicated. It can just be something around like, I love helping people, you know, like start with your why. I would say, break it down in terms of like the, the, the golden circle, yeah? So start with your why. So why do you want to, why do you want to be in this career? Why do you want to do this, you know? And one basic thing is that like, what's your North Star, yeah? And your answer would be I like helping people. You can help people in various ways. You know, you you have a starting point. That's your starting point. Now break it down a little bit more. So helping people in what context? Is it helping people in terms of helping them get jobs? Is it helping people in terms of like you you're you you you're doing psychology and you would want to be a therapist? Is it helping people in terms of you want to be able to? Because you know, helping people can be in various facets. You know, it can be also I want to help people. Um, create films, you know, learn, learn how to create films, or I want to help people learn how to dance, you know, like you can, once you figure out like what your North Star is, and then you break it down into small chunks, and then you, you use that and align that to the skills and experiences and competencies you already have, and see whether there's a match and whether this can help you figure out even more concretely, like what, what you want to do. Um, in the next stages of, of your career or your life, yeah? So I'll pause there um, just to react to some of the comments. I see someone was talking about CVs, uh, why should we employ you over other people, how to stand up from a, a recruiter's point of view, um, self-confidence. Great, these are really, really good. Um, these are really, really good points. And I do think we have like a QA and a session, but I'll try to answer some of them as I'm going along, just so that like you feel involved and you can be able to just add more questions into the chat. So in terms of value um, or being confident, I'll just answer Anne and Jura um, together. It all comes from understanding you are. You know, the most like people who have high self-esteem, it's because they understand who they are and what they're bringing to the table. So if you're able to just use those three-step um, um, assessment tools and able to understand like, what are my key strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are the skills I have? And you know that, yeah, you might not have like 10 years of experience. You might not have like five years of experience, but the experience you've gained in campus is sufficient enough for you to be able to add value to your future employer. And once you have a really good understanding of your value, your work and your, your, your brand, basically, you would be able to gain that confidence when someone asks you, tell me about yourself. You know, it'll be very, very easy. Yeah, because tell me about yourself is usually a very broad question that allows you to sell yourself, yeah? When someone tells you, tell me about yourself, it's basically they want you to sell yourself, you know? And how do you sell yourself? You just, you talk about everything I've just mentioned, you know, people think it's rocket science, it's not. It's just literally, they want to know what value are you bringing? So talk about your skills and experience. So what are the skills and experience you, you'll be bringing on board? Talk about um, what you're passionate about and make sure that you're aligning it to as much as possible to the job description. Because the one thing that, the one mistake I see people make when they're told, tell me about yourself, is that sometimes they'll go off on a tangent. Oh, I have three pets. I come from a family of three. I mean, that's part of you, yes, but it's not part something that's relevant, particularly within an interview setting, yeah? So the interviewer wants to know something that, that will be relevant to them. So if, if I'm, I'm recruiting you for, let's say, a social media manager, yeah? And you start telling me how you're very good at baking or you have a side business, like that doesn't help me. But if you tell me on the side, I usually bake and I created an online page on Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter and Instagram where I'm able to market my products. And I I also leverage social media tools to promote um, any new like any new muffins or cakes that you are baking, then that's different, you know? You've connected what you do and your value 
to the job. So I know, ah, you like baking, but above and beyond that, you're also social media savvy because you're able to leverage um, social media to market your product. So always think in the context of the job. Yeah. So tell me about yourself. Yes. But make sure it's it's valuable to the job that you're applying for. Yeah. So the three ways that I would say, I hope that helped you, Anne and, and Julia, but we we'll also have another Q&A session. You can be able to dig in. Um, and also that helped the person who had asked about, tell me, how do I answer? Tell me about yourself question. Yeah. So moving on to sort of the next, um, the next bit of the session is thinking about like, okay, now you know your value. You have the tools. I've given you the tools to be able to figure out who you are because it's a long process. It's a long, never ending process. And the one way to also know who you are, what you're bringing on the table is trying as many things as possible. Like Mark said, make sure you're applying yourself because you'll never really know what you're good at if you don't put yourself out there. If you don't take the leap of faith and be able to push yourself beyond what you currently know. You know, you don't know what you don't know. So it's better to explore so that you know, yeah, I tried, I said, and uh, that leadership is not not my thing you know or i tried being in mun and public speaking i love it yeah i love being in front of people i love debating and if you're in a career that's that's very outspoken if you're like probably in sales or you are a lawyer or you're someone who has to interact with clients and people then this is a skill you'll continue building up to the extent that by the time you're getting to that interview, you have a really good command of the English language. You know how to speak concisely and you know how to break down your points in a way that's clear and someone can be able to understand you. Yeah. So putting yourself out there will help you be able to understand, yeah, this is my value and this will give you confidence to be like, yeah, I know what you need and this is what I'm bringing to the table and I think this would be a great match, yeah? So I've, I've talked about now, yeah, your value, how you figure out your value. Now you figure out your value. How now do you communicate that? You know, how do you show the people um, who don't necessarily know you, like what your value is? And we do this in three ways, yeah? So it can be like on your CV. So making sure that your CV is, is, is highlighting um, really strongly what you've done and it's able to to for someone who doesn't know you and they're reading you're saying like yeah this is someone I'd want to have a conversation with, you know so that's one number two is online presence so LinkedIn making sure that your LinkedIn is 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 is, is optimized really really well and communicates your career and experience really well will put you ahead yeah and for some of you who are in the creative scene having a really good portfolio yeah Maybe you're in graphic design and you want to show someone, yeah, this are the work that I this is the work that I'm able to do. So do you have an online portfolio that you can put together? You know, maybe you're in film. Do you have like um maybe short films that you've done in school or like projects that you worked on that could be great? Because sometimes we undervalue and we undercut ourselves just because you don't know that those assignments that you're doing in school, those projects that you're working on, they could translate to actual work outside here. Yeah. So never, never undercut yourself in terms of um, what you've done. Yeah. So that's number two. Number three is um, in person. So I've seen your CV or I've seen your online uh, portfolio, LinkedIn, and I'm like, yeah, this is someone I want to have a chat with. Yeah. So like, we organize an interview and now we are one on one yeah now you need to be able to translate everything you had put on your cv or on your on your linkedin verbally yeah you need to be able to communicate it um through just how you speak um your your gestures and and like the non verbal cues yeah so the the interview now it's it's now the final step in like understanding yeah you've told me on paper yeah but are you just good on paper because Everyone can 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 have someone who like writes for them a CV. You know, how do I know that this is not just you just give someone to write your CV and then and then it it got me interested. Uh, but when I have that one on one conversation with you, those are two different people. Yeah. So figuring out how to translate everything you've put in your CV or LinkedIn verbally. Yeah, and that will help you a lot. So these are the three ways of how you communicate your value through your CV, through your online presence, LinkedIn portfolio, and three in person. So in person could be an interview or it could be a networking session where you're having a chat with maybe you're 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 at a work event or you're at a centenary event as well yeah and you're interacting with with other young people or there are 
movers and shakers they are entrepreneurs ceos or someone who's like at a someone who's at a position that can be able to help you elevate your career yeah and if you're not able to talk about yourself in a very very um powerful and meaningful way then you lose that opportunity yeah so these are the three main ways that you are able to communicate your value so in terms of cv because i know most people who are eager about that i'll focus more on the first one because all these three can be a two hour long session yeah so i'll try to make it succinct but also touch on the very main points that will give you um, a roadmap on how to build up on it yeah my job today is not like to tell you what to do it's to empower you to know where to look for the resources or where to start off so that by the time we're ending this session at 12 you're at a much better place than you are when you're joining yeah uh, let me just go to the next slide i don't know why it's... oh there we go great so what's a cv yeah so a cv in it's a latin phrase yeah curriculum vitae basically just means course of life so in the professional context what what have you done that could be of value to an employer yeah that's it yeah and people use words as cv resume interchangeably it depends on which part of the world you're in yeah. In the US um, and Europe, the definition is different. So if you're applying for a job, also you need to be very, very, um, you, you have to be very mindful of where you're applying. So as a senior recruiter, I, I recruit across different countries. So I've recruited in Morocco, I've recruited in Senegal, I've recruited in Zambia. I, I recruit across different countries in Africa. And the thing is within each market, their definition of what something is, is different. So you have to be very, very mindful of where am I applying, yeah? And how am I fitting it into that context? If you're applying in the US, figure out, okay, there, what's the difference between a CV and a, and a resume? For them, a resume is a one pager and a CV is a more detailed three to four page document highlighting your education, yeah? So be very, very mindful of that. So what's the importance of a CV, yeah? It allows, a recruiter hiring manager understand your experience yeah shows what your value what your value is yeah when do you use it in job applications when you're trying to change careers i saw someone in the chat was like can i be able to to pivot yes your career is not set in stone yeah you can be able to do a lot more than you're currently what you're currently doing yeah if you feel at some point this is not your career you can pivot yeah it's not setting stone yeah and the other thing that a CV helps is just what I highlighted at the beginning. It helps you package yourself. It helps you communicate a story, yeah? So what are some of the key pieces that go on a CV? Yeah, what are some of the main, main um, aspects of, our, of, of, of your career, your experience that need to be on a CV, yeah? There are very many elements. One is, of course, very basic is your personal details. So your name, hyperlinking your LinkedIn, because these days people want to, to have your LinkedIn, your email and your contact. Sometimes people, great resume, but they don't have their contact. I've had someone who was working at Coke, an amazing profile. I wanted to reach out to this guy, but his CV didn't have his contact. So now he ended up losing up on, on an opportunity just because of that. Or sometimes people put contacts that are not theirs or like contacts that are for people who would not even be able to tell them in time that you know, someone was looking for you with regards to this job. Yeah. So it's just tiny, tiny things that you need to be very, very mindful of. Number two is summary. Yeah. So after you put in your like personal details, there's usually an executive summary that is an elaborate explanation of your career how I would go about that, that summary is usually like your pitch, yeah? Sometimes recruiters or hiring managers won't even read the entire CV. They'll just read that bit and they move on. If you're able to communicate what you do, so on that, on the executive summary, what you usually put is your skills and experience, your passion, and um, what you're looking for in your next career, yeah? And make sure it's tailored to the job you're applying for, yeah? After that, highlight your skills. Make sure it's quantifiable. So top, don't put like 20 skills. Make sure it's just like the top five skills that you that are relevant to that job. Of course, all of us have like done many things, you know, but you don't have time. You don't have time to list everything. So just list the things that are very relevant. So how do you know it's relevant? 
read the job description, uh, figure out which, which are the main skills that you have there and highlight those ones, yeah? Work experience now is going into describing what you do or like what you've done, yeah? So for example, maybe you are a project manager, yeah? You can highlight, I handled um, 10 plus projects within um, the healthcare space, yeah? Make sure it's quantifiable. So add a number so that I know this is the scope, yeah? And then under, you can have like five, and then under that, you can put your achievement. So what have you achieved under that, yeah? So how have you, so you've handled 10 projects within the healthcare space. How can that be an achievement? Now, as an achievement, you can list, you successfully um, ran end-to-end -end projects with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and you are able to raise um, 1 million Kenyan shillings, yeah? So you see, you've translated the work experience into now achievement. Now, I know the scope is that you've handled 10 plus projects. Within those 10 plus projects, one of them, you raised money, you brought in a huge partner, and you were able to do that end-to-end single-handedly, yeah? So make sure your achievements are very quantifiable so that someone can be able to tell, this is what you have done, and this is what you're able to do. The other thing is education. Usually people, sometimes people put like so many, like um, you put so so much of your experience, your educational career there, but usually what is important is just undergraduate up. So if you have an undergraduate degree, start with the undergrad and then add any professional um, certificates that could be useful. So for example, if you're in accounting and um, you have to have an SCCA, make sure you add that because some jobs might need you to have an SCCA or like a CPA, yeah, CPAK. If you're in law and you have to have gone through um, KSL, make sure you put that certification there, yeah. If you don't have a degree, start with the, the start with a diploma or like a certificate course that you did, yeah. References, sometimes you may or may not need to have like your references on there depending on if you have space. Make sure it's three to four pages, yeah? Three to four pages max. So I'll take a break there uh, just to see if there are any questions that I can continue answering as I'm going on. Is there somebody necessary for students and new graduates? Yes. Um, yes, because you need to... So let me give you an example. So you're fresh off campus. The only experience you have probably would be you are in a club, you're in an actors, you're in Rotter Act, and um, you're trying to gain experience into a job that maybe you don't have, you don't have work experience. Yeah. And this is this is you trying to put yourself out there. Yeah. So that summary allows you to very quickly highlight what are some of the skill sets that you have and why you want to move because it might be not it might not be very obvious to someone maybe you're from finance and you want to join hr so for someone who's reading is like hey this person only has finance experience why you know if i'm asking myself why and i find the answer in your summary that helps you a lot it's like i'm a finance professional but i'm looking to pivot into human resources and i, I believe that this opportunity will be something that would spearhead that that like you know because i've not been i've not jumped on a call with you to try and understand why you you want this job you know but that summary helps you yeah you're able to defend yourself without being there yeah and education it's not necessary to put your transcripts unless it's expressly requested for you yeah sometimes um sometimes people send me a cv and they send like 10 other certificates you know of what they've done that usually doesn't help you so don't do that <laughs> unless the job ad has said send your cv plus your your educational certificates don't do it because it it's more often than not it'll put that recruiter off because it'd be like you didn't read the job ad and you didn't follow instructions yeah um yeah uh i think Additional information can be hobbies or passions. Make sure, as, as I said before, <clears throat> make sure it's aligned. Yeah. If you if you love baking, put and maybe you're applying for a social media thing, put that you run a baking business and you like you created a online presence for your baking business, you know. So make sure even your hobbies are aligned to the job as much as possible. This is you're selling yourself 
and you're aligning your experience to the job you're applying for. Formatting, make sure your document is well, well formatted, yeah? And there's usually something called an ATS, and an ATS is basically an application tracking system. And what it does is that you might apply to a job and then five minutes later, you get an automatic reject. And that's because you've not aligned your experience, your achievements to what they're looking for, yeah? So make sure, read the job description, understand it really well. For example, if the job says, we're looking for we're looking for like a social social media manager and maybe you what you are doing in campus or like um you are running like social media for like a uh, in isec and maybe your title then was um marketing manager yeah and the ats has been to, has been given specific keyword is social media so if the word social media is not in your ex list of experience when you're highlighting bullet point one, two, and three, then it'll read you, it'll read and then screen you out. Even though you do, you, you social media management was part of your job, yeah? So if you don't read and understand the JD and tailor make it to um, the, the application process, you most likely will be screened out, yeah? So these are some of the reasons why you might not be getting a call back. Sometimes you've not put the correct contact, your career history, there's gaps and you've not highlighted why and it's not in chronological order. So usually start with your most recent to the, 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 the last yeah? presentation. Maybe it's, it's not looking good. So some people just look at a CV, put them off and be like, if, if I want this person to write a report for me and this is the kind of work that they're producing, then they'll, they'll, they'll produce substandard work. You know, grammar, sometimes you have like grammatical mistakes and you you haven't um, spell check your document, make sure you spell check. If I go through a document, I'm seeing very small eyes um, and I'm seeing very many grammatical mistakes, I'm more often than not going to screen you out. Yeah. So make sure, spell check it, read it once, put it aside, go and do something else, come back when you have a fresh pair of eyes, go through it again and make sure it makes sense for the job you're applying for. Length maximum three, three to four. Yeah. People usually say, Oh, but I've done so much. How can I be able to put it in, in three pages? I've interviewed CV, CEOs who have one page resumes, you know, or like two pages. It's possible. You just highlight the three key things that you need someone to know within that experience and the one or two achievements you had. You need to list 10 things. Yeah. Just put the most relevant things that I'll read and I'll be like, Yeah, this one is aligned. Yeah. And make sure that your accomplishments are there. Um, differentiate that from like your responsibilities. Like I said, a responsibility could you are in charge of highlighting um, what's this called? You're in charge of maybe filing documents. Yeah, so you can put you you filed hundred plus documents um, within this and this department supporting this and this manager. Yeah, an achievement under that you're like you successfully developed uh, an efficient filing method, and as a result, you reduced the time for filing by four days or five days. You see, so one you've told me what your scope of work was, and then two you've told me under that this is the achievement. Like I made it more efficient. Yeah. So the final thing is about interviews, but I think Mark already covered um, how to like handle yourself in an interview, how to communicate your value. So I won't dig in too much there. I'll just say, know the, the STAR method, Google it, research it, and make this your best friend when you're communicating your value, yeah? STAR method is basically what's the situation, what's the task, what's the action, and what's the result. So for example, if I ask you, Tell me about a time where you managed um, a difficult client. Yeah. So is that with maybe the situation? Maybe, and and sometimes, and sometimes like you might not have that exact experience. So I'll tell you, client, and you're just fresh off campus. You've not interacted with clients, but maybe in your in your experience, you've had to deal with difficult, like just managing difficult people. So you can you can you can find a way to be able to translate that into um, a useful response. And why is that important? Because the, the key thing here is that they don't want to know about the clients you've worked with. They just want to know how you handle difficult situations, yeah? So try and look for another difficult situation that would fit that situation, yeah? So it'd be like, for example, 
when you are running a club and you got very pushback from um, the school administration, you are trying to plan an event and the school last minute um, decides to, to um, cancel your event or like decides to give away the venue to someone else, yeah? So how did you handle that situation, yeah? So that's the situation. The task was still being able to run a successful event within the set timelines, yeah? So how are you able to do that? And the action is, what did you exactly do? So you might have gone to lobby with your patron, you might have gone to lobby with your lecturers to help you um, to defend your case in the uh, administration. And what was the end result? Were you able to still run the event? What were the key learnings you would be bringing uh, if you had to deal with another difficult situation? Yeah. So with that, um, thank you guys so much. I hope you've learned a lot about what, um, how to find out your value. So assess yourself, ask your family and your network to assess you and do online assessments, yeah? And then how do, how do you communicate that? You communicate that through your CV, communicate that through your online presence, LinkedIn portfolio, and also communicate it in person in a networking event, in an interview, when you're chatting with people. Make sure also your network understands what you do, yeah? I can tell you for a fact that all my friends know what I do because I talk about it a lot. <laughs> so if they don't know what you do, they don't, they can't plug you. You know, you know, sometimes shooting your shot is just talking about what you do. Yeah. And you never know who has a, an opportunity that could be aligned to what you do if you don't communicate. Yeah. Even at family events. Yeah. That uncle who you send your CV to, <laughs> you, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Because personally, that's how I get, I got my first job. I was just at a networking event at ISEC and I was just talking to this alumni and like one of them always oh, like, yeah, you're interested in this. We have an opportunity actually. And that's how I'm here. You know, so put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to try as many things as possible. You're in that really sweet age where you can, you can fail, but make sure you fail upwards. Like, like from every failure, you, you are learning something that will help you the next um, um, opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, try as much as possible and don't give up at the first like challenge that you face. Yeah. That's it from me. Thank you so much. Amazing, amazing stuff, Renal. You see, when they say you're a student of life, <laughs> that yeah. you're learning left, right, and center, this is me right now. I've written so many things here. <laughs> I'm literally asking myself, where have I been? But I love it, and I love to see it. And these are among the things that we teach, even um, in the campus edition program. And I love um, a few things that I'll just highlight that you spoke about, Renal, is the three-step assessment tools, which just help you to know, you know, what are some of the strengths, the skills that you portray as a person, and how, how can you even speak about them. Um, I love that you spoke about your achievements and just having quantifiable um, work experience. So you put a number to it so that it's easier for the recruiter to even understand when they say they have been doing like this amount of work, what has it totaled up to and all that good stuff. I, I love that you spoke about um, hobbies and skills and aligning them to the job or rather the job description. I think that is one thing that a lot of us or a lot of people in the room um, right now feel like is not a relevant thing, but it is um, the STAR method, which is something that I personally admire and love. And I love that you told people to be loud and to be bold. Guys, if there is a statement that you should not forget, it's to be loud and be bold. In that family reunion, in that get together, when you're chilling with your friends, when you're having a good time, I think this is something that um, for me will stick moving forward and even failing upwards. Like when you're failing, fail upwards. It's not like you're failing and then you just sit and then you're having a, car, a car session with your friends where you're just woye woye a pity party. No, it's just moving and failing upwards. So right now we have Will I open the Q&A session? I, I saw a lot of people raising their hands at this point. Um, I think probably I'll ask a few other people to raise up their hands. And I'll also ask Mark. Mark, I hope you're still with us. Maybe you can turn on your video and be ready for the Q&A session. We have so many questions and a lot of the questions were aligned around how to communicate yourself, uh, your, 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 your um, value. And both of you have spoken about that. And I love the fact that you, you just made it very clear that the one key thing that we all need to remember is just to communicate your value and to always remember that you are a value creator entity within your space, among your squad squad, um, in that internship, in the attachment. So right now, um, 
a lot of the questions are coming in on the Q&A section and I'll just be throwing um, some of them to you guys randomly. I know that there are some questions that have been answered. So guys, if your question has been answered but you still feel pressed, um, you can raise up your hand and we will give you a chance to, um, to speak them out. But before we go to that, I'm seeing a lot of people um, shouting you out, Reynold, as the same way they shouted out uh, Mark. There's someone here saying, thank you, Reynold, for the enlightenment. Someone actually said you have a really good voice and that they are a voiceover coach. <laughs> <laughs> so you should consider doing voiceover. Very interesting. Um, so thank you. Thank you guys for the comments. Keep them coming. Um, you know, I love the fact that this session was organized by the person who organized this session made sure to bring in people who will give you practical, practical tips that you can start working on right now. I saw a lot of people say that from the from the two sessions, I was further from both of you, they actually understood what was missing in their CVs. They understood what they were not doing. So I love that you guys are still learning. But now let me just open up the Q&A session. Um, uh, among of the among the questions that have not been answered. So once you land an interview, how do you answer? Tell us who you are. Uh, tell us about yourself. I believe Reynold had already answered that. Um, how do I communicate my value in my CV? That was also answered. Good morning. The session is going on well. I'm a first year student at your NUN. People shout out to you. We are almost closing for the holidays. I would really be honored if you could advise me on what to do for the holidays in terms of internships and attachments. And I will uh, show this question over to Mark. At least let me give Reynolds some few minutes to, you know, sip some water. <laughs> sip some water and all that good stuff. So Mark, I think you can take this question. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, that, that's a good thing. It's first of all, it's a good thing that you're in first year and you really want to, you know, build your brand that early. That's a very good thing. Um, kudos to you. Uh, something I can say is um, you can try applying, you can try just, you know, doing jobs that, um, again, I mentioned sales, marketing, and volunteering. You can try volunteering to any organization that you might find. But as of now, what I can tell you is try and build on your skills, try and do those online courses, build on conversational and, you know, just, um, uh, you can do public speaking, you can do those those small soft skills courses that can put you on edge, you know, give you that edge in terms of who you are as a part of, as a person. Remember, we're talking about your value and your value doesn't have necessarily to be just your job experience. It can be how, how good are you in speaking? How, how eloquent are you? So try and build those skills, uh, enroll in a course. If you love designing, design, enroll in a course on design, you know, just build on your value. So yeah, I think that's what you can do as at now. Volunteer and just build your value on, uh, on the online space. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mark. And that that's very accurate. Um, and I, I love the fact that this person is also thinking about creating value, or rather thinking about the opportunities once they're so young. Because what we have, one of the resources that um, as young people you have is time. You have the time. And as you've had, you had time, but fail, failing upwards. Um, I have another question here. If offered an opportunity to do marketing of a company that deals in a product you are not familiar with, never interacted with before, and don't study about it, how should I approach the offer? That is from Diana Ngato, and I'll shoot the question over to Reynold. Um, sorry, just repeat the question again. Um, if offered an opportunity to do marketing of a company that deals with a product you're not familiar with, haven't interacted with, and haven't studied about, how should they approach the offer or the opportunity? Ah, fantastic. Um, that's a good question. Oh, most of the things, um, particularly in marketing, it's very transferable. So marketing is, depending on whether it's online or offline, it's telling a story. So how can you be able to tell a story that's impactful? Yeah. So maybe you've done, you've marketed something, um, let's say you've marketed a phone. Yeah. And now you're being asked to market a service. Maybe it's a, an online class at Centronomy. Yeah. The, the main um, the main um, anchor here is that are you able to tell a story? Yeah. So try and build upon or try and, and remind yourself of the skills that you already have, of how you are able to market the previous product. And then now research, research, research. Now research that space. Look at their competitors. What are their competitors doing? Try to carve out um, a marketing campaign that would be different from what their competitors are doing. Research 
locally, also internationally, and try and see, yeah, this is what you guys are doing. But if you guys do X, Y, Z, you might be able to stand out in the market. So the core thing is you already have the, ex the core experience. Yeah, you already can market. You've already done before. Now it's, can you tell a story for another product? And what do you know about that product? So research, 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 look at the competitors and yeah, you'd be able to, to uh, figure it out. Uh, right. I, think I can I can add on to something. Uh, um, so the thing is, something about the corporate world is that um, it's very dynamic. Every single day you face challenges that it's not written on, it's, it's not cast on stone that this is how you deal with this challenge. It's all about how creative are you in solving this particular challenge. So the fact that you have experience doing marketing for another thing, this time it's best that you use the experience you have and creatively you know, do your research and creatively now uh, find a way of approaching now this offer. Because honestly, most of the things, you don't know how to do them. You just get creative on a daily, daily basis. There's no articles to stone. This is how this product should be marketed. It's all about you creating it and, you know, just being creative and uh, knowing how to do it. Yeah. Love to say it. I think I'll ask two, I'll take two more questions and then let two people um, I, 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 um ask the questions themselves. And one question that I saw come up a lot is about the salary expectation. So guys are saying, how do they answer that question? Or how do they say that this is the amount of money that they want for their salary? And I think I'll shoot that over to Reynold as well. Fantastic. Salaries, salaries are a very interesting topic. And it's a topic that most people shy away from. And, yeah. and and the thing that I say is that if you know your value, then communicating the that in terms of monetary terms would not be difficult. Yeah, the 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 core thing here is it's not it's not what you're saying, but it's how you're saying it. Yeah, because yeah. the what remains the same. You want higher pay, or you're trying to negotiate higher. Yeah, it's the how. So how do you approach that conversation in a way that will um, not be off-putting? So number one, I would say, understand your role really well. Understand, like do research on the market. So ask questions, um, try and see in your network who has a similar role in on LinkedIn or um, in your family as well, or your friends, like who would be able to connect me to someone who will help me know this is the pay skill that this role is coming in at, yeah? And usually when you're in the room and you're having now um, that question asks like, what do you want? don't go about just blurting it out yeah tell a story tell a story in terms of the value you have you're bringing on on board and tell a story in terms of how that is equated to the market rate yeah so you can say i'm bring, i have like a year of experience as as an intern and i've been able to work at this organization that i've gained xyz skills and from my research on the market uh, market rate i believe for a role at this level um the benchmark would be between 50 and 80k or 80 and 150k yeah and i'd be comfortable to have that discussion um, when we get to that later stage so open it put and when you put your minimum don't put like put the um, for example if you want 100k yeah and they've asked you to give a range yeah put it as you're open to 110 to 150 but open to negotiation yeah the one thing you never want to do is that you never want to lowball yourself but also never put it um don't put it don't put a figure that you've not researched don't just pull a figure out of the wind and be like yeah i think this is what i deserve no try and understand the space understand how much are people being paid in that market and the only way you do that is reach out to people on linkedin who have the same role talk to people in your network who are working in the same industry or can be able to point in the right direction so that you don't lowball yourself and also you don't make it off-putting yeah and when you're giving that range always communicate in terms of um always communicate in terms of the value yeah sometimes people um, usually talk about like the personal experience. So, you know, I'm paying rent and anything. that's like your employer doesn't care. Your employer basically doesn't even care if you sleep hungry as long as you're delivering value. Yeah. So the one thing you need to focus on is, the, is communicating the value you're bringing, the research you've done and what you think is sufficient for this role. Yeah. And then just to add the cherry on the top, you could talk about the personal thing, but never make that the main thing. 
it can be like, yeah, you know, if they want to negotiate, it can be like, yeah, I would love to take a lower offer, but I'm currently paying for myself through this course and it costs X, Y, Z, or I'm currently paying my help loan. And if I'm not making X, Y, Z, um, just based on the value that I'm bringing, I would not be able to um, cover up like my help loan or like be able to pay for this course, you know? So in as much as you want to like tag on the heartstrings, don't make it the main thing. Let the main thing be, this is the value. This is the market um, market value for this role at this level. And then also above and beyond that, on a personal level also, this is what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. Nice. I love that, Reynold. And always remember the amount that you ask for should be equivalent to the work that you're bringing in. So, you know, there's always that to consider. The last question that I'll ask, and I'll, I'll just shoot this to Mark. I've seen a lot of people asking about um, rejection during interviews or if you're rejected, what do you do? Do you, uh, if how do you even know? Do you send them an email? Do you call them to know if you're rejected? So I think discovering the rejection um, angle during an interview, how do they go about it? Or rather, how do they even know if they haven't gotten the job or if they have gotten the job and how to communicate that? Ah, great, great. Um, <clears throat> thank you for our question. Um, it's a very interesting space when you get rejected because first of all, we'll have to agree. So let's start by you have gotten that rejection. Then we'll go to you have not gotten it or they haven't gotten back to you. So you haven't, you've gotten this rejection. Uh, it's an interesting space because it's very, I, I mean, you've gone through the, all the interviews and then finally you've got rejected. So the, you, you have all these emotions. And one thing I can say is don't, don't you don't have to uh, blot out your emotions to them on email or it's, it's always a good thing to not burn bridges. So you have gotten this regret. So the best thing is, first of all, thanking them about for the opportunity. And you can also add that if anything comes up, they can reach out to you. Yeah, um, about rejection, uh, the rejection, uh, now you haven't been communicated to. It's only bold enough to reach out. The person who called you for an interview, just reach out to them. Maybe, maybe it's not even the rejection that hasn't, has happened. Maybe the, the, the recruitment is still ongoing. So it's always good to just reach out, ask where we are, at, um, what, what, what is happening, did I succeed, did I not succeed? Yeah. But again, as Reynolds said, uh, fail upwards. So you've, uh, you've, you've missed out on this opportunity. How best can I align onto, uh, how best can I align myself for the next interview? Um, interestingly, there are the times when we used to have, um, you know, during the COVID times, we really had a lot of online interviews, lots of it. So uh, some tips you can do is if, if, you, if it's possible to even record yourself through the interview so that now when you get rejected, you can, you know, just go through it, look at it, look at how you answer questions. It's always good to see yourself answering questions because right now you think this is how it is, but when you see yourself, when you see yourself answering questions, I'm sure you can, you can pinpoint, I could have done that better. This is where I went wrong. So fail upwards. Yes, you got the rejection. What next? Don't sit and cry. Just do something about it. Yeah. Correct. I love it. I love it. Um, so now I'll just give an opportunity to a few people who I saw raise their hand, but we'll just take two, a gentleman and a lady. So I saw this Kevin Chep Chepkoni. If I believe, I hope Kevin, you're in the room. This is your golden opportunity to ask the question that I've also seen a couple of guys asking if uh, you guys are going to share your contacts. I think I'll leave that to the speakers for our for the day. If they'll, uh, they're okay with leaving their contacts, I think they can put it on the chat. But right now, I'm going to give Kevin a chance to ask the question that he wanted to ask. And if Kevin, are you Kevin? Are you in the room? Okay. Uh, I, I wanted to ask about uh, those online certifications. Like we have, as for me, I'm majoring in software engineering, which is in the field of computer science. So you find there is these schools from online schools from India, like for example, Edureka and Udemy. They are mostly offering some online courses, and at the end of those courses, you earn a certificate. For example, there's a course I did. It was about the Java programming language. So at the end of it, I was awarded a certificate. So during course during job application, are these certifications have they have a value or they just valueless? 
So should I include them in my CV and uh, those skills which you said, Reynold said, you need to explore, tell more about yourself, the skills you have, what you can do with those. Uh, that, that, that was my question. Um, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, what, what I can say about those online certifications is that they're very, very, very important, especially even you as a person gaining the skills. Now, for example, you have done them from UDB. Did you gain any skills? Yeah, first of all, from your side, did you gain any skills? And if you gained any skills, then it's worth the is it's worth placing the CV. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it gives you edge. And uh, apart from somebody else who hasn't done that, who hasn't done that course, who hasn't gained that skill. Yeah. Something else about LinkedIn, it's a very good place where you can now put the certifications now publicly because now these are these this 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 um this these courses are what gives you again they give you edge as compared to anyone else so yeah put as many if you've done most of these online courses it's always healthy to put them in your cv yes all right thank you for that mark um i'll ask michelle amondi michelle amondi if you're still in the session kindly ask your question and i'll address the question to reynold Michelle? Michelle, are you with us? All right, I think Michelle is not there. Um, and just because we are pressed of time, for all the questions that were not answered, guys, that is why we have the career planning module as one of the modules that are there in the campus um, in the campus edition program. So guys, this is this is the point. You've already heard from people who have been in the situation or rather who have gone through the campus edition program. And I just want to give a shout out to our speakers for today for an amazing, amazing job. Thank you for the tips and the practical steps that guys can even start taking as early as now, just so that they can prepare themselves um, for that first job, to get that first job, to even get that internship. And um and or first job. Um, I'd like to just talk about the, the Syntonomy um, Campus Edition program for a few minutes, just so that we can be able to understand what is what is this Syntonomy Campus Edition program? You know, what, what, what is it all about? So the Campus Edition program, again, as I said, it gives you the fundamentals of a few or a lot, a lot of other things. It gives you the fund fundamentals of understanding what are the principles of personal finance management? How do I find, how do I manage my money? We talk about about the time value of money and debt and savings and investments as the three main investment or other personal finance topics. So you want to understand what are shares, what are bonds, how do I go about them? How do I understand time value of money? How, how much does the money right now cost in future? You know, I have that Kadeni that I took from a friend of mine just to start a business. How do I go about that? And that is what the first three modules of the Centonomy Campus Edition program helps you to understand. And then we also also have the people who are here and they're wondering, I have this car business that I've been speaking about with my friends. How do I start my business? How do I launch my business, even as a young person? Because remember, just because you're young doesn't mean that you have the capabilities. You have what it takes. So how do I start this business? How do I go about um understanding what to do on social media when it comes to my business, understanding um, the accounting books there and all that good stuff. So how exactly do I start that business? And the other thing is the career planning module. So the career planning module is an amazing, amazing module. And as you have seen from the speakers of today, they learned so much about um, their career and, uh, and about career planning, career management, so career development. So how exactly do you do this? And this is trained by our amazing, amazing coach, which is Yvonne Shah, who is Yvonne Shasubi. She was not able to be with us today because she's not feeling well, but we put her in our prayers. But she is the one who takes you through the career planning uh, module. So all those questions that you've been asking, how do I um, go about um, writing an actual cover letter? How does my LinkedIn profile need to look like? How do I optimize my LinkedIn profile to look a certain way? How do I be seen and be heard? How am I going to grow my personal brand? And all that good stuff is covered in the career planning module. And the last but not least is mentorship. So a lot of, uh, a lot of people right now in campus are there 
and, and they are brand ambassadors for this for uh, the Centonomy Campus Edition. We have worked with them even for other Centonomy programs. And this is where you get to even network and know some of the people, gather, gather some of the contacts that we have. And that is what mentorship is all about. We will give you access to so much more and so many people and influence. And you know, we'll be able to just help you to grow a brand through mentorship. So if you're wondering how much or how often or how, how to even go about all of about the payments and all of this, the classes happen every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So the fact that you have availed yourself today, right now, for the campus edition webinar, the classes are at exactly the same time from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it's delivered through on it's an online program. So everything is on Zoom. You get materials, you get all of this content at your disposal. Situation so fee is 16,000, but the registration, the, the registration is a thousand. So lock down down your spot today by registering for only a thousand bob and you know what the best part is the tuition fee is paid in different installments so if you want to know the installment plan here is installment plan it's five thousand five thousand three thousand three thousand so at this point once you register for today for that a thousand book right now is this is the opportunity for you to even go and tell your parents i have dedicated myself this morning you have seen me i have been here listening and taking down notes let me or rather assist me to be able to even go through this program so register today with a thousand book and the installment plan is there you can pay in four installments and if you wish you can pay the whole amount in total and the class begin on the 4th of June of 2022. So guys, lock down your registration today. If you want to know how to register, the, the information is on the screen. As you can see, registration today is a thousand bob and there's the pay bill and the account number is your first name plus the word campus. All of, you see all of those questions that you're asking on the chat and it's quite unfortunate that we can't be able to answer each and every single one of you we can't be able to um, ask each and every single one of you to unmute themselves and ask your questions but i assure you these are some of the things that are tackled in the campus edition program um, i've seen our hosts or rather our our speakers for today have left their linkedin profiles on the um, on the chat box feel free to connect with them and just to understand further how to go about um, your career journey. As we have said, at Centonomy Campus Edition is where it's, it's at. You have seen people who have been through the program and you've seen their career progress and their career trajectory. So we hope to see you in class. Remember, registration for today is going for a thousand shillings. There's the pay bill. There's the account number. We cannot wait to just have you within our networks just so that we can be able to empower you and enlighten you and give you more and more practical steps to everything and anything including personal finance including entrepreneurship career planning and best of all we mentor you through um the whole program so guys today today's the day today is the day if your squad squad gang gang has been here you know you you can just figure out how to do it push each other so that you can be able to register for the class and registrations are ongoing from now until um, when class starts which is on the 4th of june from my end and from the end of our speakers i just like to say a special thank you for engaging with us for being here for creating the time and i want to wish each and every single person who is here um, an amazing amazing weekend ahead remember that everything you do will always translate to what you want to do at the end of it all so if you're joining those clubs if you are part of isec part of um enactus all the things all, all the organizations that you just mentioned kindly 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 guys take away the skills take away something from each which is the skills that will always translate to your cv and how you sell yourself from my end i am juliet Wamboy. as i said i run the centonomy campus uh, the centonomy career hub program feel free to reach out to esther at centonomy.com or the number on your screen so that you can ask more questions on how to register and just how to go about it from my end and the end of the centonomy team we'd like to say a special thank you and to wish you an amazing weekend ahead stay blessed and thank you also to our speakers bye